If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. In order to find the volume of this particular solid, it's going to be useful to first graph the ellipse that is described by this equation. And probably the easiest way to graph this ellipse, at least, is to find the x and the y intercepts. So we can begin by finding the x intercepts by letting the y equal 0. And by doing that, this term would be eliminated. We would have 4x squared equals 36. We'll divide both sides by 4, so that x squared equals 9. And then when we square root, we would get plus or minus 3. So we have two x-intercepts. We can go over here, and maybe we'll make the scale a little bit spread out. So we'll call this 1, this 2, and this 3, and then same thing on the negative side. And we'll plot the two x-intercepts, one at positive 3 and then the other at negative 3. And now what we'll do is go back and find the y-intercepts by letting the x equal 0. And by letting x equal 0, this term will eliminate. We'll have 9y squared equals 36. We'll divide both sides by 9. And then we'll take the square root. And we can see that the two y-intercepts are located at plus or minus 2. So let's go ahead and plot those. And now that we've plotted the x and y-intercepts, we can connect these four points together with a smooth curve to make the ellipse. And so here we have the ellipse. And after graphing it, it might be a good idea to just step aside and try to understand the underlying concept of this question. And it turns out that the concept is no more challenging than understanding that the volume of any object, any regularly shaped object, would be its cross-sectional area multiplied by its thickness, which we can call t. And maybe the best way to see that is to consider a simple regularly shaped object such as a cube. So if we wanted to find the volume of this cube, what we could do is take the cross-sectional area of it, which would be the area of this surface right here, and we can label that area A, and then we would multiply it by the thickness of the cube, which we could label T. Now usually when we find the volume of a cube, we might want to use length times width times height. And that also works if we label this the length, and this the height, and then this dimension right here, the width, we could do that. But just notice that length times height would actually be the area of this square right here. So if you did length times height times width, you could actually replace the length times the height with the area, since that is indeed the area of this front face of the cube. So area times width. In, in essence, the volume using length times width times height is the same result as just using cross-sectional area times thickness. So let's try to figure out an expression for this cross-sectional area that we've labeled A. The question notes that there are slices perpendicular to the y-axis. And so if we draw a line that's perpendicular to the y-axis, we might get something like this. Now that would just be one slice. There are actually an infinite number of slices here. We're not going to draw them all because it would clutter up the picture. But just realize that this one slice would be copied, so to speak, by other slices. So we would have another one perhaps over here and then others all over the place. But we're just going to consider this one slice. Now it's important to come up with a label for this particular length right here. And we can see hopefully that that length extends out to this point right here. And that point is x comma y. And so that makes this horizontal distance right here equal to x. This distance back here is of the same length, so we could also call that x. And the total distance of that segment would therefore be 2x. So we can actually go ahead and just label that 2x. Now, of course, this slice is not just a one-dimensional line. It's actually a two-dimensional square. And this becomes a little bit challenging to draw, but hopefully we can use our imagination to see that this line right here forms one side of the square. The other side of the square would be projecting sort of out of the computer screen towards us. Now that's impossible to draw, but we can do our best maybe by assuming that we have a three-dimensionally projecting square that's coming out of the computer screen at us. And so this is my best attempt at drawing a square that's coming out of the screen. Now because it's a square, that means the other side would also be 2x. Of course, 
all the lengths of a square's side are equal. So if this dimension is 2x, that means this other dimension is 2x. And so we can see that the volume would be equal to the area of this square multiplied by the thickness of the square. Now the area of this square would simply be 2x multiplied by 2x. That's the basic formula for finding the area of the square. Now the thickness, we haven't shown that yet because we've only drawn it two-dimensionally. We could add a little bit of thickness to the square. It might look something like this. But the point is that this thickness is very, very thin, actually. It's just a very small increment of length. And in calculus, when we have a small increment of length, we use either dx to denote that small increment of length or dy. And I admit that in this picture, it might not be clear whether we're using dx or dy to represent the thickness. So let's back up for just a second. And what we'll do is sort of take an overhead view of this square. So if we were looking straight down on the top of this square, we actually wouldn't see this thickness. In fact, all we would see is the top surface of the square. And we would also see a little bit of its thickness. And so the thickness would look something like that. So remember, this is an overhead view. We're looking straight down on top of this very thin square. And we can see that the thickness would be this dimension right here. And if you look carefully, that dimension is measured in a vertical sense. It's going up and down. And of course, the vertical direction is the y direction. So our thickness, in short, is actually going to be dy. So going back to the volume of equation, we had the area, which was 2x times 2x and then times this thickness, which is going to be dy. Let's go ahead and simplify this a little bit by multiplying out to make 4x squared times dy. Now, in calculus, in order to get the full volume, we can't just deal with this one square slice. We have to deal with an infinite number of them. And the procedure for determining an infinite number of these slices would be to integrate. So we're going to integrate both sides of this equation now, technically, the left-hand side, because it was the volume of only one of these squares, was actually dv. dv just represents a very small amount of volume. So when we integrate the left-hand side, it actually becomes the full volume v. And then we're trying to integrate with respect to y, but our variable is actually x. So that's a bit of a problem. We want to come up with an expression in terms of y, since we're trying to integrate with respect to y. Well, we go back to the equation, and we can see that 4x squared, if we subtract the 9y squared, would be equal to 36 minus 9y squared. So we can actually replace this 4x squared with 36 minus 9y squared. And that way, we can integrate with respect to y. We also need bounds when doing this integration, but we can see from the picture that the ellipse is bounded in the y direction from negative 2 to positive 2. So we could put those bounds into our expression. So now we have the volume of all of the cross-sectional slices. And if we evaluate this integral, we'll have our answer. So when we integrate 36 with respect to y, we get 36y. And then here we have to add 1 to the power. It's going to become y to the third. And then we divide by that new power. And again, we're integrating from negative 2 to positive 2. We can simplify this. This will just become 3y cubed. Let's go ahead and plug in the upper limit. We'll have the subtraction, and then we'll also plug in the lower limit. And then you can pick up your calculator and simplify. And when you do that, you should get exactly 96. So this.